who's heard about the Big Bang? Everybody, right? And who's heard about the fact that the earth was going to come to an end? Everybody, right? So that's the place I come from where we were trying to put, not really, the earth on the end, but trying to investigate and look for what matter is made of. Trying to answer questions like, where did we come from? Is there another universe? Where did all the antimatter go? Because matter and antimatter would have been formed in equal proportions at the Big Bang. And I'm sure that you've, you've been wondering about these kind of questions ever since you were a kid just like me. So atoms, molecules, sorry to be a bit scientific here, but I'm sure all of you know more than this, the basics that we have atoms, molecules, electrons, all that we are made of. And you also believe that all of us are, have been together at some point at the Big Bang in the cosmic soup, isn't it? So what we are trying to do is to try to find out what else exists at the time of the Big Bang and what else exists inside matter. How do we do that? We just smash particles. And when we smash things, like the games you have played when you were a kid, you see what happens. Let's try to see. I've got these two helicopters made out of Lego. And what would happen when they break? Oh, they come out in Lego pieces, obviously. If I increase the energy with which they collide, the, my pieces become smaller and smaller. And what if I give more energy? Let's take a quick look. Oh, what came out here? You didn't expect that, did you? But let me ask you a question. You believe in dinosaurs, simply because you haven't seen them, but you've seen signatures. You've seen the fossils. You've seen the remains. Similarly, E is equal to mc squared. The only equation I'll share with you today, that energy can make mass. That's what we are trying to do at our collider. So this is where I come from. That's the collider underground, 27 kilometers. And those two dots, red and blue, represent the particles that we smash and we play the game that I just told you. And then we try to look at what happens when these protons collide. We try to look at infinity on either side, obviously. And on the one side, we have the galaxies which are studied from cosmology, astronomy, and so on. And on the other side, we have this very fancy microscope called the Large Hadron Collider. And these are the kind of instruments that we use to take pictures of the collisions. And I work on these detectors that take data from the experiments. Those are the experiments studying the collisions and telling us more about the Big Bang. So I started my journey from Jhansi in Uttar Pradesh, and that's my school. At the school, of course, I had fantastic teachers, and they encouraged me to study science. But of course, I was a good kid, I guess, and I used to get good grades too. I went to university, and at the university also, I studied physics, I started studying nuclear physics, and I was very interested into learning about matter and what makes everything. Then I got an opportunity to go to CERN for three months. And when I went to CERN in 1987, even though I had a stellar CV from India, you know, coming first and first class this and first class that, I was completely on all fours simply because of all the kind of gadgetry, the instrumentation, the electronics, and all the handling of equipment in the laboratory was completely out of my understanding and out, I was completely out of my depth. So this gave me a challenge. How can I be able to participate in research at the forefront in this laboratory? Of course, I mean, um, I was quite dejected as well. And nevertheless, I took upon myself to take up a second PhD. I had done my PhD already at Delhi University by then. So I took up a second PhD, and this I did at the Geneva University, which then led me into an understanding of how to build detectors, 
particle detectors, which are at the forefront of all these experiments. These experiments are made and built by very large teams. There are thousands of people who are working there, and also from India, there are several institutions and collaborators who work at CERN. So I've been involved from, from the year uh, 1996 up to 2008. I have been building detectors installing them, commissioning them, operating them, and then studying some physics results out of them. So the, the large sizes you see here represent thousands and thousands of tons of detectors, and in total, it's actually 14,000 tons, about 7,000 elephants. So here you see uh, in the control room as well, when my experiment started, to take data, I was part of the, com the commissioning team and also preparing the very first procedures for safety, for operations, and so on. Yeah, you can take a sight of all the kind of um, big collaboration that we are, and people work here from all over the world. I was very fortunate that I landed in the, f in the group of a Nobel laureate, and that was amazing. That was George Sharpak. In physics, he had got the Nobel Prize in 1992, and I was there. And eventually, for the Higgs boson, that was discovered <laughs> at the Large Hadron Collider in 2012, I was there as well. Time had come that I have been building all these detectors. Of course, I studied a lot, and I had been working 24-7 for nearly 20 years. But then I thought, it's time now to think of something new. So I thought, on the research that I had done in the very first part of my journey, I picked that technology, and then I brought that technology into this new experiment. And this is a claim that very few people can say, that bringing a new technology, working on it, making patents as well, and then establishing a collaboration of hundreds of people all over the world with several institutions and all of them training them with workshops day after day. And uh, this training also happens a lot in India. And these people are then coming to CERN and actually working on these detectors, installing them, commissioning them, and so on. So I'm very proud of my team. And this detector was eventually approved because when I proposed it for the first time, of course, I mean, it was an uphill task. Nobody could think that an Indian girl at CERN could come up with an idea, with a new idea, <laughs> propose, and propose to this very large experiment that we should have a new technology should be installed in the experiment. Of course, it was to improve the experiment, but then proving it took nearly four to five years. And of course, these days, everyone worked together with me, and I'm very proud of the team, of course. As we speak today, the team is installing the detectors in the experiment, and I'm getting uh, online reports from them. So clearly, I have had the fortune. Of course, it has been a very, very hard-working life sacrifices, personal sacrifices, family, and so on. But without the support of mentors and family, one never gets to making world-class work. And that's the point I would like to share, that I have been trying to bring back everything I have learned to the country. Because in 2001, I had my first student from India. From then up to now, I have had 500 students from India to CERN. And, of course, we cannot bring all of India to CERN. So we should bring CERN to India, isn't it? So that's the next step. And I started for initially rather haphazardly, but then with a structure, I started a foundation that's called Life Lab Education, Science Education and Research Foundation with like-minded people. And we train students, we have training sessions, we do workshops, and up to 5,000 students have been trained in India. <laughs> of course, it is very important to train the trainers. So, Training teachers is very important, and bringing teachers together to learn the new methodologies, 21st century pedagogies, have to come into our schools. Because 
Even today, when students come from India, I would see the gap on the international level and where we stand in terms of our students. So this gap has to be bridged. So whatever possibility I can offer to the students, not only I, my team as well is with me. And then you see here, for example, once our prime minister came to CERN and he said he wants to meet with young scientists from CERN and you see my students with uh, Prime Minister Modi. And of course, we have many opportunities to meet with dignitaries. We are very fortunate. We have encouragement from our government, which has a very big focus now on science and technology and capacity development. So I'm extremely proud to be a part of the fraternity of science and technology. Now, all that is great. At CERN, we do research, we train people. What next? What can we do with what we learn? We can bring all this science and technology into the society. You go to the hospital, you go, you ask, my bone is broken, can I have an x-ray? How this did come about? You all work with mobile phones, right? And cameras and so on. Did you hear about the World Wide Web that it was invented at CERN? And the World Wide Web has now changed completely the face of the planet, the way we interact, the way our social lives are now dependent on Wi-Fi, isn't it? And if you look here, that when we start our experiments, we would go through the design phase, the creative phase, and take data, and once in a decade, maybe the team gets the Nobel Prize, but 67% of our students go to the industry. They go to various industries. For example, artificial intelligence, um, neural networks, and all kinds of electronics, all training is extremely useful for the future. And as you see here, for risk analysts, for financial analysis, data analytics, CERN has been at the forefront of this revolution. We collect 70 petabytes of data per year. We are the highest generator of data on the planet. So that has to be analyzed. Where are the students who are going to look at this? And we in India must take the lead. We have been at the forefront of science and technology, but today we do not see that kind of a, an impetus and enthusiasm to take up pure science. So I am here to ask you to look at the kind of possibilities career in science can bring you. Once you are a physicist, you will always be a physicist, and you can do everything. You can work in industry, you can work in medicine. So let me tell you that our accelerators that we have pioneered at CERN and also elsewhere in the world, in United States, in Japan, these accelerators are used to cure cancer. You know when you have a radiation therapy for cancer tumors, the exit dose from the body is also very high. It means that the healthy tissues around the tumors are also equally affected as are the unhealthy tumor tissues. Therefore, by using protons instead of radiation, if you use protons, you are able to target the tumor. The energy can be tuned to the size of the tumor, and the position can be tuned in such a way that you make a digital scalpel. So this therapy is called proton therapy, and that is being used in Japan, in United States, and Europe is the world leader. In India, we do not have this machine. We just have imported one machine in the Apollo Center in Chennai. We have just started to think of importing for other places in the country. The cancer burden of India is immense. We have more than one million people waiting for treatment. One machine can treat, at best, 600 patients per year. So the need of the hour in our country is to look towards solutions. This machine has a very high cost as well. The machine costs the ranges for about 200 to 300 million dollars. Should we start thinking of making the machine in the country? Should we start thinking of particle physicists, accelerator physicists in the country to come together and to build something that we have the competence. We already have the competence in the country. We just need to get the critical mass, the awareness, and of course, the will 
to be able to put this thing, this whole thing together. And our countrymen are really waiting so that they can then profit from this. You know, in our country, we have a huge amount of talent, limitless talent. We have big pools of competence. We just need to coordinate a bit. We need to go forward, learn. China has learned. China has now, is now building a collider in the country. In India, of course, we have other priorities. But we should not lose the opportunities where we have applications, technologies outside developed in a very advanced manner, which we can then bring into the country. And of course, it's, a, it's an uphill task. Where do I begin? I'm so disoriented. So we just need to break this down in such a way that teams from various departments and various faculties can come together and then look towards solutions for the society in many, many different manners, not only educating the new students, the new educators, but then bringing them all together, stringing them together in the service of the country, which I think is limitless. Thank you very much for your attention.